The Commander X-16 has started shipping development boards, which brings us one step closer to the initial commercial release. I thought it would be nice to show off one of the lesser-known built-in features that currently ships with R42 of the ROM. Particularly, I'd like to show the built-in assembly editor. First, let's create a Hello World program in BASIC. This is something that everyone should know how to do, but it's worth taking a look at anyways. Like the Commodore computers that came before it, the Commander X16 boots directly into a BASIC environment. You can execute BASIC commands directly, or you can place a line number in front of them to indicate that it is part of the current program. Let's make our Hello World program do a little more than simply print a message. To make the text bigger, let's switch to Screen Mode 3. This also has the effect of clearing the screen and homing the cursor. With our two-line program typed out, we can run it and see the effect. Our message is printed to the screen, and because we are still in the basic environment, a ready prompt is displayed to let us know that the X16 is waiting for our next command. The screen stays in mode 3 because nothing told it to switch back. Now let's write the same program in assembly language. The Commander X16 has an assembly editor built directly into one of its ROM banks, and even has a basic command for launching it. Simply type codex. We've entered the Codex Integrated Assembly Environment. This application operates using a menu system controlled by the function keys. We will need to use a function key to get to the menu we want and to execute each operation. To start, we hit F1 to get to the File menu. Notice that the function key labels on the top of the screen have changed. We now hit F1 again to indicate that we wish to create a new file. We are prompted for the memory address where we want our program to begin. You can see in the top right of the screen that the default program region starts at hex 8000, so we'll just use that. Now we find ourselves looking at the main editor and monitor screen. On the left is some default code that was generated, which is simply a return instruction and a label. And on the right is the CPU and memory state. We are going to ignore the details on the right for this video, since the program we are writing is so simple. To perform any editing, we need to get into the assembly menu by hitting F3. Here, we see the menu change to useful editor commands such as jumping to an address, inserting, removing, and editing lines, and adding and removing labels. To start writing our program, I'd like to remove the main label on the return instruction and replace it with a label called end. I use the F6 key to remove the main label, and I use F5 to enter a new one. Before going any further, I'd like to create friendly aliases for some kernel routines that my Hello World program will use. To define an alias, I hit F7 and I type the friendly name followed by a space and the hexadecimal address of the routine. I'm going to define a label for screen, which sets the screen mode, and for BS out, which prints a single character to the screen. With my kernel routines defined, I'm going to start writing my code. First, I'm going to change to screen mode 3. I load 3 into the accumulator with a load A instruction in immediate mode, and then I jump to the screen subroutine that I just defined. You'll notice that when a line is inserted, it is inserted above the line where the cursor is. This may be a little jarring if you expected it to be placed below, but it's easy to get the hang of. Just so it's easier for me to see where my program begins, I want to give the first line of my program a main label with F5. If I were to run my program now, it would change the screen mode, but you couldn't easily tell because nothing would be printed to the screen. So let's add some text. In order to print text, we first need to define it. Codex supports adding strings as C style strings and Pascal style strings. For this first example, we'll use a C style string where the string data is terminated by a zero. I can insert a line and use the .CSTR macro followed by my string in quotation marks. This encodes the given string directly into memory at the current location, including the zero termination. To be able to refer to this string in my code, let's give it a friendly label text with F5. I'm going to leave the string at the bottom of the program right before the return and start writing the code that reads it. I know that I'm going to need a loop to read the string one character at a time, so let's use the X register as the loop counter. I load a zero into X to initialize it. Now I need to start my print loop. The first line of the print loop is going to read the address of text, 
offset by the current loop counter X. 6502 assembly makes this easy with the absolute X addressing mode. Now that I have the first line of my print loop, I need to give it a label to indicate where the loop begins. Once I've read a single character of the string, I need to check if I'm at the end. If I've just read a zero, then I want to branch directly to the end of the program. This is simple with the branch equal instruction. On the next line, I know that I've read something other than zero, so it's safe to print it out to the screen. I do this by jumping to the BS out kernel routine I defined earlier. Once the character has been printed, it's time to increment the loop counter with the increment X instruction. Finally, we branch unconditionally back to the beginning of the loop. This should complete our first assembly Hello World application. To run, we need to navigate back to the main menu. On every menu, F8 returns to the previous menu, and on the main menu, it exits the program. On the main menu, we can run our program with F4. Before we run, it should be noted that there was no step to assemble our code into machine language. That was happening immediately from the editor as we typed lines. The editor directly translates every line we type into machine language and merely displays the human-friendly assembly equivalent for our benefit. You can see both the machine code and the assembly code in different columns of the editor. This means our program is ready to run. When we hit F4, we are prompted with an option to change which address to start the program from. We will just hit return and use the address we decided on when we created the program. Our Hello World program works just as expected. When Codex runs a program and that program finishes, Codex keeps the screen in place and waits for the user to press a key. Once a key is pressed, the screen mode is restored and we are taken back into the editor. To exit Codex, simply hit F8 and choose to discard any changes. Repetition is the key to learning, so let's write our Hello World assembly program again, but with a slight change. Reopen Codex and create a new file with the function key menu. Just like last time, we are going to relabel the return instruction to end. We will be using the same kernel routines as last time, so we'll define them again with F7. Then we'll load a 3 into the A register with the immediate mode and call the screen routine to set the screen mode. Last time we created our string in the C style with a terminating 0 to indicate the end of the string. This time we are going to use the dot .PSTR macro to encode our string in the Pascal style where the first byte indicates the length of the string and the string follows. Just like with the C string, we give our P string a friendly label. Take note of the address of this label. On my screen, it's at hex 8005. If we exit the assembly menu with F8, we can hit F2 to enter the view menu. From there, we can choose F1 to view memory. When prompted, we type in the address from earlier and are taken to a raw view of the memory at that address. On the right, we see the memory decoded into Petsky but notice that the H in Hello World does not start at 8005. If we look to the left, we see that the raw value in 8005 is 0D, which is 13. If you count the characters in our string, you'll see that this is correct. The length is indicated up front when we read the string. We can hit F8 to go back to the main menu, and then F3 to get back into the assembly editor. We still need a loop counter, but since we know the number of characters up front, it's convenient to initialize our loop counter to that number and then decrement it as we print each character. So instead of loading x with 0 in immediate mode, we use load x in absolute addressing mode and simply read the value at our text label. With x starting at 13 and ending on 0, this means loading a with absolute x addressing would print our string in reverse order. While this might be fun, I'll let you do that on your own. Instead, we are going to use the Y register for addressing, so we'll need to initialize it. We don't want to start it at 0, since that will read the length of the string and not the beginning of it, so we'll load a 1 into Y in immediate mode. Now it's time to start our print loop. We load from the text label with absolute Y addressing. We aren't going to have to check the value each time, like we did with a C string, 
because we know that if we are in the loop, then there are still characters to print. We simply need to jump to BS out every time. Now we need to increment Y, which tracks our position in the string, and decrement X, which is our loop counter. When X is decremented to zero, we know we are done with the loop, so we want to branch back to the beginning every time it's not zero. The branch not equal instruction will do exactly that. If we've made it past the branch not equal, it means we are finished printing. If we do nothing, the CPU will attempt to execute our string as instructions, which would be bad. Instead, we will unconditionally branch to the end label to hop over the string. Like before, we use F8 to go back to the main menu, and then use F4 to run. If everything was typed correctly, the screen mode will change and we'll see Hello World printed at the top of the screen. Thanks for watching.